so as promised today I'm gonna to do the Bali snack haul so you're actually going to join me and try the snacks with me together so let's go straight into the snacks and for those who are interested um, stick around and I will talk to you more about the Bali trip like where to stay where to go what to avoid and things like that so the very first thing this is the Bali assorted biscuits and I saw this on my way um, I guess going into the airport um, and I was only like this was like a really last minute thing I was like you know what I'm actually gonna try what is native to Bali because I don't know what is you know considered like a souvenir to buy in Bali so I thought maybe some food so let's um, open it and see aha so you get basically a variety of different types of biscuits they kind of look quite general like this looks like just a regular like coffee biscuit um, there's some wafers there's like a almond or maybe peanut cookie there and there's some other random stuff so let's just open it and try them I'm gonna go for this long weird wafer thing because it looks cool Wow It is super crunchy So it's not chocolate. It's like a it's not vanilla. It's almost like a honey like sugar honey like really sweet type of texture Hmm like can you hear the crunch? It is so crunchy. Like usually I don't expect wafers to be this crunchy. I can so imagine drinking this, drinking this. I can so imagine eating this with like tea. It's so good. Everything else in here is actually quite nice. Quite impressed with this assorted biscuit. I think these are great like gifts idea. I'm not sure this is actually native to Bali, but it's something cute because it has some like Balinese writing on it, I think. Okay, so the next one I'm gonna try is this um, fabulous Bali tiramisu milk almond chocolate okay that sounds pretty dangerous so it's in a lovely box with a little handle so I guess it's great for a gift idea and inside the box is a aluminum packaged so I'm going to open this one up ah so it's like just an uh, like a coated an almond coated chocolate looks like that mmm Definitely really rich. A lot more chocolate than there is almond, which is probably a good thing. The almond seems pretty fresh, like in comparison to like, say, Nusa chocolate that we have in um, Australia. I think the chocolate in Australia is a little bit more creamier. But the fact that this is coca toast, uh, coca coated tiramisu flavored almonds, for what it is, it's actually pretty good. So I don't. I do recommend you guys trying this if you are really into like almond and chocolate. Okay, the next thing I wanted to, really excited to try is one of these Baron cookie. So this is actually what caught my eye and what wanted me to try some Bali snacks because obviously these are like cookies that are native to, to Bali, I think. This is the one with their sort of flavors. I've got plain Bali rice, Bali salt, and Bali coffee, which is actually Bali coffee. I actually tried barley coffee while I was there and it's actually quite nice it's not like it's straight up black coffee but it's not to a point where it's so bitter because some coffee black coffee like straight coffee is quite bitter I like how this is also like has this really pretty um, print it looks like one of those dresses that people in Bali wear once you open it it has the label there bar and cookie barley and I'm gonna open it hopefully nothing's fallen out okay Oh my god, this is so cute! So you've got plain in a packet. Oh, they're, they're massive. So you've got big ones, the back here, which, and then you have little ones in the front. How cute are these? Oh my god. Okay, I'm gonna try the little ones because obviously I'm not gonna finish the big ones. I'm just gonna give those big ones away. And I'm gonna try these little ones. So, the first one is plain, and um, I guess it's just gonna be like a regular cookie, I think. So let's try and see. This is actually very compatible with the um, the one I got in Japan, like the butter cookies. It's quite soft. The only difference is because it's not as thin as the other ones. Maybe that's why it doesn't like fall off the like like melt in your mouth. But it is like almost to the point of melting in your mouth. Just a buttery taste, not too oily, not overpowering. Definitely great for like a snack or something with coffee or something like that. So that's good. My lipstick all over that. Now the next one I'm gonna try is the salt one. I can already imagine what this one tastes like because 
I don't know about you guys, but I actually don't mind cookies that are a little bit savoury. Because it almost feels, feels like not as guilty, like you're not as eating something crazy and bad for you. And I also want to mention how cute the design is. It's actually of a, it looks like a lion head. Not like the one in China, obviously. But some crazy lion head, which is kind of funny. Wow, you can definitely taste the salt in that one. But I don't want to mention, it's not like the salt, like a sea salt taste, salt like aftertaste, not really much as the salt itself. Not quite pleasant, I'm not sure I'm not, I'm not sure I'm into that. Okay, I'm gonna try the barley rice one. So much cookies. Ah! Oh. Okay, so it looks like it actually has rice in the actual cookie like uncooked rice, which is kind of bizarre. Uh, I guess if you cook the rice, it can be kind of weird. So I don't know, we'll see. This is interesting because it the rice adds like a crunchy texture to it and also breaks down the butterness. So it actually is better tasting than the plain one because if, I feel like I can actually finish this one as opposed to the butter one because the butter one seems so rich and buttery. The rice version's been probably my favorite so far. Last one, which is probably one I'm actually really looking forward to is the coffee and it's like slightly darker in color as well as you can see oh my god it has that coffee smell it's it actually reminds me of the barley coffee that I had there it has that like really nice bitter coffee taste to it and that coffee scent actually lingers in your mouth so it feels like you've actually drank coffee, but you just ate a cookie though. The rice and the coffee one is probably, probably my favorite. So those two are actually really nice. So while I was looking at the cookies, there was this other version, which is the premium version. And this one has like a really cool texture, uh, cool flavors. This has got coconut and palm sugar and mango and white chocolate. So as soon as I saw mango and coconut, I was like, I'm sold. So I had to get these and try these. And um, so let's open them up and see. So just want to show you quickly comparison to like the, the, the artwork on it. This one's more like a darker version than, than the yellow one. So if you were to get these, I think it's probably worth picking up both just to see and taste the difference. So same thing, this one has the, the name on the top and inside you also get four mini ones and then four big ones up top. So these are great for, so two of each of the flavors up on top and the four mini ones. So I'm just gonna try the two because there are only two flavors in there. And this one is the mango and white chocolate first. I feel so fat and I'm only tasting this. Okay, I can't smell the mango but I can smell the white chocolate. There's actually dry mango bits in here. And I think the white chocolate is mixed in with the, the batter. So it's like a white chocolate aroma, but with the actual mango bits. Not bad. Okay, let's try the coconut and palm sugar. I don't smell coconut or palm sugar. It just smells buttery, okay. So it's slightly darker than the mango one. I think the coconut bits is too small that you can't even taste the coconut. And I guess the sugar, the palm sugar isn't very sweet at all because it doesn't, it does not sweet at all. So I feel like I can eat this. I think the only thing I can feel in my mouth is the oiliness of the coconut because I can't actually taste the coconut bits. So out of those two, I much prefer the um, mango and white chocolate one. I think these ones are much better. If I can get them by themselves, I will actually get this one. Anyways, I think that's it because I didn't buy a lot of um, snacks there because I didn't know what was native to Bali. I only know that coffee is really um, famous there, but I didn't want to bring coffee because I'm actually just really into tea at the moment. So if you guys have asked me about my trip in Bali and where I stayed, my friend and I booked a like a private villa because there was four of us sharing, so we shared a two-bedroom villa. We had our own private pool, which is really great. It was very nice service. People there were super um, friendly, and there were people that spoke, you know, fluent English that can help you out whether you wanted to book um, dinner or re uh, reservation or get to places. We actually had really nice food there as well, and really nice crushed smoothies and icy drinks because it was so hot in Bali. One important thing to always remember when you're um, traveling to like 
those places like quite humid is to bring insect spray because obviously there's a lot of mosquitoes especially at night time and especially like after rain or something like that um, another thing that I've learned is I always bring a um, either purple ointment which you know are great for like just general like lip balm or like you can do cuticles you can even do like if you accidentally burn yourself or something like that, just to have with you at all times, or if you have really dry skin, whatever it is, or itchy bites. And also, taxis in Bali are super, super cheap, but they do tend to rip you off, especially at nighttime. They can actually bargain with you and say, I would only, you know, I would take you for however much bar. So then, um, for those who are not familiar with the area, you might you know, get ripped off because they will charge you a lot more. So always ask for a meter and always ask for a bluebird. Because bluebird apparently I think is like government monitored so they have to go by meter. Another thing is because there's so many spas and so many massage places in Bali, it's really good to actually shop for a good deal. Um, a lot of the hotels provide their own massage like um, spas and treatments but they're obviously a lot more pricier because it's within the hotel. So if you want to venture out and find your own places. Another note is my friend, what she did was she picked up some brochures while we were at the airport. It was um, had a 50% off uh, coupon, which means if you book more than two people, you get 50% off and also it's free pickup and free drop off. So they can pick you up from your hotel and then drop you off anywhere after the treatment. We did like a 6.5 hour spa treatment that after that, I was actually overdosed. We did a milk bath, we did a hostel massage, we did a Balinese massage, we did a hair spa, we did manicure, pedicure, like the whole, the whole set. We also did some water sports. On the last day, I think I probably should have done the other way around, is doing the water sport first and then have the spa treatment the next day. Because the water sport, because I obviously don't work out as much as I should, the water sport is quite intense. We did flying fish, we did donut, and we did banana boat. Banana boat was fine, it was fun, it was just like running on like a, a banana and uh, you just get pulled around by the jet ski, oh no sorry, a, a speed boat. But then donut one is the scariest one because I thought donut was where you just chill on the donut and you just get pulled around, it was fun. No. This person was doing like drifting like in the, in the middle of the ocean like I'm not kidding you, like 20 times, I was dizzy, I was about to fall off and I was actually scared because I was screaming for, I was like, I couldn't hold on anymore because I, I was so tired from holding on that I feel like if I just let go for one second, I would just be flying out, probably break my neck and die. So that's something that I would not enjoy and I do not recommend and I probably would never do it again. That's my first and last experience in the donut. My favorite one is, however, the flying fish, surprisingly. I thought the flying fish, you actually get to like face the front so you can actually um, you know look at yourself going up but it's actually on your back so you're lying flat and then all of a sudden you're in the air and you can see the whole ocean it looks kind of scary because you're flying up in the air on, on a floaty thing but it's actually really enjoyable I think that's my favorite one out of everything we did when I first went to Bali people told me about the Bali belly which is kind of like don't drink their water because if you do drink the water you obviously will um, you know go through either like diarrhea or like stomach cramps they'll usually give you like bottled water in the hotel to brush your teeth with so when you're showering things like that just make sure you don't drink the water that you're showering with and always use a bottle of water to brush your teeth. So Kuta is where basically all of the, um, like the Kuta beach, all of the hustle bustle and the busy areas. I went to um, the like the beach walk mall which is actually in the center of Kuta and that's where you do a lot of shopping, a lot of like the like the night scenes and food and all that stuff. Like there's a lot of people there, a lot of tourists there. And then you have Seminyak, which is basically a little bit more upmarket. But right between Kura and Seminyak is uh, is called Legion, and that's where um, we stayed after I left Seminyak was because I was staying with there with my with one of my friend, and it was kind of convenient because you can go to Kura and you could also go to Seminyak. It was kind of like in between, so it was great. Um, it was amazing because you get to like experience the whole. I guess the 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 bad part of Indonesia, oh, the bad part of Bali. It's not really bad, like the dirty part of Bali, and then you have like the higher end of Bali. So it was quite interesting. There's a lot of um, nice restaurants there along Seminyak um, waterfront, and those prices are pretty much comparable to Australian prices. So if you were looking for like quite a, like a high fine dining places, there are, there are quite a couple of restaurants there like Potato Hair, Kudeta. So I think overall it's a nice place to visit. Just you have to be aware of like always, always exchange your money at a proper convenience store or like a bank. Don't go to those dodgy like over the counter things because they will actually shortchange you. So 
they'll count it in front of you and it'll look like you know they're giving you the right amount but when you actually take it and count it yourself you're definitely short on money and I don't know how they do it it's some sort of magic trick they do so don't go to those places um, other than that just you know make sure you use sunblock because the Sun there is quite you know intense I actually got a few shades darker um, even though I put sunscreen on and other than that I hope you guys uh, enjoy this kind of video if you have any questions any about anything else besides the snacks or about Bali leave your comments below and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can um, other than that I hope you guys have a lovely week and I'll see you next time bye